Welcome to Talk Tantra to Me. It is such an honor to be holding space for this divine knowledge to make its way into your ears and lifestyle. Today, I talk Tantra with Stevie Wright. She is a self-love coach and breathwork facilitator. I'm so grateful for her content and so appreciative that she is here on the podcast to offer her perspective of living an expansive life. So thank you for being here, Stevie. Why don't you start by telling us a bit about your journey with breathwork and embodiment? How do you discover this passion and purpose? Thank you so much for having me, Leo. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Leola. I really, really appreciate it. Um, happy to be here. Yeah. So I am a breathwork facilitator. I'm a life coach. And a lot of the work I do is centered around embodiment and somatic work. And um, I found breathwork by accident, really, uh, about three or four years ago. Uh, a girlfriend of mine invited me to a breathwork class here in LA. And um, she, I, you know, I didn't know what it was. I thought I, first, I, you know, I heard breath work and I thought it was some sort of workout class. So I had my workout clothes on and, mm-hmm. um, we get there and we're in a big hall and there's a gong and a bald man and, um, everyone's like laying down and I'm like, Oh God, <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? I had no idea what it was. And, uh, that experience that night was really profound. I ended up having, it was my first breathwork experience. It was, uh, the first time that I had touched some of these inner parts that haven't, hadn't been touched before. And it was such a beautiful, memorable experience for me. And I was like, what was that? You know, what just happened? Um, I had a big emotional release and I, I kept doing breath work just personally in my own, um, in my own, uh, routine for my own, you know, for my own healing. And then just a couple of years ago, I got certified. So it was totally by accident. Um, but something that I just fell in love with. And I knew that over the couple of years that I was doing it for myself, I saw, what a shift it was making and how much it helped me connect to my body. And I knew that I really wanted to offer it to my clients as well. Beautiful. What is it about the breath or breath work that just lights your soul on fire? Well, breath work, in my opinion, is truly the most healing modality in the world. I really believe that. And the reason that is, is because everybody has it. It's internal. We all have access to it. And it's a way to really bypass the mind, bypass the ego and go into the body. And the body is the subconscious, the body. I really believe that the body is subconscious. And when you're working with the body, this is why somatic work is so cool is that when you're working with the body, you're able to reach layers of the consciousness that the talking mind, you know, the, that the ego doesn't have access to day to day. And so we're able to reach much deeper states of healing and transformation with the breath, because you're going right into the body where all of the trauma and, you know, old wounds and wisdom and all that juiciness is stored. Beautiful. What a gorgeous answer. I see so many, you know, breath work is like one part of Tantra as well. And there's, you know, all these different ways that you can explore just breath work and then breath work within, within Tantra as well. And I love this concept of applying, um, this perspective to the subconscious because it's also, you know, so much about shadow work and seeing what is going on beneath the layers of, you know, trauma and societal conditioning and limiting beliefs etc. And I'm curious how you feel breath is like the way to tap into that specifically. Yeah. Well, my, my somatic teacher, my somatic healer, so her name is Stacy Matulis. She's incredible. And she's taught me, she's been teaching me about how the breath gets into the nervous system. So you're working with the nervous system. So you're a- actually able to de- regulate and, and, and learn to self-regulate with the breath. And it's also getting into the tissue. So the, the belief system, the old wounds, the trauma, they live in the tissue. And when the, the, the breath is able to reach the tissue. So it's like wringing out a sponge. It's like bringing out all the gunk. It's, it's wringing out all the, um, old story, the, the parts that don't serve and it's able to reach into those fibers and actually clear 
belief system that's living in the tissue. So that's why I, I use it so much in, in, you know, my personal life and also in my work is because that's what it's doing. You're reaching really deep into the tissue. Beautiful. With so much intention too. I, I'm glad that we're kind of touching on how this is physically happening in the body with a little bit of a, a scientific, you know, lean, because that's the space that eludes me the most. Um, but even looking at it on a spiritual level, what I like to say is, you know, each breath that you're breathing in is just charged with this like love, this infinite love from the universe, because it's, it has the nutrients that we need to continue being right without, without these nutrients, we wouldn't be able to continue experiencing whether it's, you know, pain or pleasure. And then that is alchemized somehow in our heart. And then it's brought through our entire, entire bodies, which is just such a beautiful thing to me. Um, so yeah, what, what are you working on now? What exciting things, like, how is this journey progressed and brought you to the the current place that you're in? Well, I'm really excited right now in my life about the breath channel, which is my monthly breathwork membership. So I made it, um, actually just two days ago, what's it, what's the date? Maybe three days ago is the one year anniversary of releasing the breath channel. I released it a year ago. It's been my baby for a year. It's one year old. And, uh, it is my breathwork membership that is full of tons and tons of easy, short, and deeply, deeply effective breathwork practices. Um, there's embodiment practices in there. There's meditations. There's songs. There's guest teachers. Uh, breathwork for abundance, manifestation, inner child, higher self, motivation, digestion, period pain, sleep. Um what else there, uh, aura expansion. Um, I mean, there's at this point, there's almost like 60 practices in there. There, it just goes on and on. And there, there's a theme for each one. And I'm really, really proud of it. We have just under 630 members and it is, it is my baby. It's like the members are so in love with it. The, the messages that I get, the, the messages I get about the breath channel, people are saying, you know, this breath channel is changing my life. My kids are doing it with me. My partner's doing it with me. I'm getting my friends to do it with me. Um, I'm, I'm getting circles of women together to do it together. Um, she, you know, I, I can't make any medical claims, but I've gotten messages saying, you know, I feel like it's healing my autoimmune disease. Like it's just, such a powerful modality and it's so accessible. It's all donation based. It actually, um, maybe like six weeks ago now, it used to be 20 bucks a month. And, uh, that felt really good. And, and that was, that was totally fine with me. And that felt aligned. However, I was still getting, um, emails and messages saying, I love the channel so much. I don't want to, um, cancel my membership, but I just have to pay off this credit card or I'm just, I just need to cut the little things right now. And that just didn't feel right to me. I wanted there to be a way where I get supported, you get supported, and we live in this, this community of everyone gets to have what they need. And so I sat with it. A, a girlfriend of mine um, brought the idea. And even just an, an old version of Stevie, even six months ago, would have gone into scarcity and would have gone into, mm. oh, no, I, I can't possibly do that. Like, what about if I lose all the, the money? Da, da, da. And I just, knew it was the right thing. It was such a yes in my body. I trust the integrity of my community. I trust that the people who really need it for zero get to have it for zero. And if you want to pay five, 10 or 15 or 20, that's great. And the people who can afford to pay 20 or more will do so. And Leola, that's exactly what happened. I announced, I released a video announcing the donation based a bunch of people came in at zero or five or 10 or 15. And then the ones who could afford it went to 40, went to 60, went to 80, went to a hundred bucks per month because they're just that in love with it. And they had the means to do so. And so I just trust, you know, when people, when you ask people to search their heart and find the price that's right for them, they will act in, in integrity. And uh, I'm actually making more money with the donation base, there's more members that I get to serve. Everyone is having what they need. And it's just a community that is blossoming and flowering. And it feels incredible. That is beautiful. That whole 
story gave me so many chills just because Aww. we have, we do have so much, you know, I, I also offer certain programs and things that are donation based. And I tend to find, you know, the same thing that, um, not only are then you, you're then able to give so much value to people that are really, really need it. And they're able to, to assess what they're able to give in that space, but also seeing how, you know, others that are, are, are able to see the value that it's, that it's bringing into their life and be able to, to give you an equal energetic exchange an exchange that they feel is in resonance with the value that you're providing based on what they're able to, you know, invest in. And, and that can sometimes be, you know, double or triple what, you know, the value you originally placed on it for everyone. So that's, that's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank you. It's something that's so near and dear to my heart. And I think a lot of people who couldn't be in the channel before are able to have access to it now. And there's just so much, there's so much gratitude swirling. It's like this giant ball of gratitude from both the members end and from my end. And it's like swirling this big ball of gratitude. And from that gratitude, more abundance is being created and and more people are joining. And um, every time I get an email, you know, from my a platform that says you have a new donor member. I'm like, ah, I'm so excited. You know, it's just, um, it's a, it's a really cool space. Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I'd love to jump a little bit more into what it means to do breath work and have sort of a transcendental experience. Cause I know that, that this is something that I've experienced and is super accessible with breath. This idea of it's kind of cliche, but getting high on your own supply, right? What does that mean for you? Well, I have had many, I actually, so I, it's funny. I, I don't know if you know this, but um, I don't know why you wouldn't know this. Or maybe I told you, I can't remember, but I just got back from a somatic healer training for the last five days. So I'm honestly kind of like, Ooh, like I'm still processing. <laughs> I'm still processing so much. And um, we just went really deep into somatic work. And I'm, I'm in this eight month long program of, of uh, really, really getting deep into somatic embodiment and, uh, first helping myself in that way and then helping clients and all that to say, I did a, there were a few breathwork sessions that we did and they were bonkers, just absolutely bonkers. And that's the thing is that when you are touching the unconscious, you, it does feel like getting high. It feels like you're on psychedelics and it is you're reaching these corridors and corners of your mind uh, and your body that maybe you haven't touched before. And sometimes it's a little scary and sometimes like big feelings come up, but if you can just meet them with unconditional welcoming and you can meet them with learning curve consciousness and um, a big yes, saying that it's safe to feel you, I welcome you, grief or pain or sad or mad or or joy or, or abundance or any of the flavors. Um, that's when that's like, that's the part that's like ringing out the tissue, bringing out the sponge because you are going into these deep corridors and then welcoming whatever comes through. And then when something is fully felt, Stacy taught us, like when a feeling is fully felt, it takes 90 seconds. That's it. And the feeling is done. And she even made the joke, um, saying, you know, people, people will tell you, but I've, I've been feeling this for 15 years. And that's because you haven't fully felt it. Mm. You haven't fully gone into the pain of what this belief system has felt like living in your body. When you fully go into a belief system, it takes 90 seconds and there is literally more of you available. So it, it can become a very wild experience because you're going to the subconscious and you're not working with the thinking mind. Um, and I've had many experiences where I feel like I'm on psychedelics, where I feel like I'm journeying. I've had many, uh, client clients have the exact same thing. Um, you know, you can go into deep sadness and grief and then screaming bloody murder. And then like the most deepest ecstasy and bliss, bliss you've ever been in. And that's the, that's its power. It's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I love, I, I definitely resonate with this idea of you have to feel it to heal it and to connect into your body and be fully present with that is, you know, the, the juice, that's the key. And in Tantra, we say that the three, the three main tools that you have for tapping into presence, for feeling into these, you know, deeply rooted, you know, beliefs or patterns or fears or whatever it is 
our breath, sound and movement. And to me, all of these are breath really, you know, with your breath, you're also making sound and, you know, you're allowing the breath to move through your body. And to me, that's, that's a very tantric experience, very expansive experience. And I just was realizing as you were talking about this, um, I was, you know, going through some of my breathwork journeys and it's not a super regular part of my practice, Uh, but I do enjoy it. And I've I've hired coaches at various stages. And I remembered it was like exactly a year ago, almost I like a year it's within a month of a year ago that um, I hired a coach, breathwork coach. I did a couple of sessions with her in the first session I did. um, I had the idea for this podcast. Oh my God. (laughs) Yes. Yes. We're coming full circle here. That's how, that's hysterical. That's amazing. That's how it works is I, oh my God, the downloads I get in, in breath work, the ideas, the creativity, um, the ahas, they are so, so special. Like some really beautiful things have been birthed in that process. And I, I so get that. It's amazing. We're totally full circle. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's super crazy for the listeners. I, I didn't, I mean, I was pretty skeptical of breath work when I first started. I was like, it's just breathing. What could possibly happen? But it really does release different, I, I don't know, like experiences to the point that it really does feel psychedelic. It feels like you're on drugs in the most beautiful way. And I mean, I've had like energetic orgasms from this experience. I've had incredible visions from, from breath work. Um, and, and I'd love to, t- to touch more into that. If you have seen any of this, um, what, what concepts of breath work that are overlapping with, you know, maybe sacred sexuality, uh, in your space. What I've seen and what I've experienced is, well, let me separate those two. What I've seen is I've seen a lot of times where clients are uh, hitting some sexual trauma mm-hmm. and they're they're working with that root chakra and some of the blockages and, and energy that's been stored there. And the breath is working with clearing the energy and, and helping them feel some of the pain and feel into some of the grief that might be holding there. Then, and then what's on the other side again, is more of you, more wholeness, uh, more openness, more availability. There's literally more energy, more of your system available to you. So I think when you're working with it in that way, what's on the other side is a deeper relationship with your sexuality. Mm -hmm a deeper understanding of your sexuality, uh, a deeper connection to your yoni afterwards. And so that it can be a very special practice for me. I don't have sexual trauma, but what I have found in in my own personal practices is that there is, I'm able to really move some energy that might be in my root chakra and I'll feel ecstatic turn on. I'll feel deep bliss. I'll feel, uh, my body like responding in what I haven't had full orgasm like you have, but I have experienced like really deep turn on and it's been wonderful. And then after breath work, I'm like, Patrick, my partner, (laughs) where are you at? (laughs) Um, and it's been, it's been, uh, that hasn't happened for me personally. I haven't had a ton of experiences like that, but I've had, I'm thinking of like two or three experiences where I have intentionally worked with my sexual energy in my root chakra. And it's really helpful. Beautiful. Yeah. It's definitely a big part of what I do in my work. I I don't necessarily always just use breath work, but I'm often using breath work in combination with other things, both with my clients and on my own and using the breath to like move the sexual energy or the Kundalini or life force, whatever you want to call it has been huge in my experience. Um, and, and using it with a partner in a sexual experience, like holding eye contact and in synchronizing breath, or even kind of creating a polarity breath where one is inhaling as the other is exhaling and using that to create um, a microcosmic orbit. Right. Super powerful. And just sharing this for the listeners as well. Another one that I started doing is onking. Have you heard of onking? No. Oh, what's that? Okay. So onking is, I, I talked to, um, to Elizabeth April about this as well. I interviewed her a few episodes ago. Um, but essentially onking is this ancient Egyptian practice. Like an onk is that symbol that kind of looks like a cross, but it has the loop at the top. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Yes. 
So essentially you're mimicking that sacred geometry in your body with your breath. So Mm. basically you inhale at your root and then the energy comes up into your heart with your inhale. And then you have the energy leave the back of your body. This sounds really esoteric, but I swear to God, I was very skeptical. This is real. So you go up into your heart, then it exits the back of your body, like the back of your heart and your, in your upper back. And then it loops around like the onk. And then you, so you, you breathe up, you hold the inhale as it exits, you hold the inhale. And then as it comes back in, you inhale a little bit more and then you exhale it back down. And I'll do this at like, just as I'm about to orgasm and the orgasm is like insanely supercharged. So wow. incredible. And I'm like ready for more, you know, cause sometimes wow. an orgasm you're like, okay, cool. I'm satiated. You know, you're, you know, whatever, but this, like, to me, you're, you're, you're keeping the energy in your body and circulating it with wow. the cosmos rather than just letting it go. Right, right, right. Oh my gosh. I need to find a YouTube video on this. <laughs> yeah. It's, you can find it. You can Google it onking. It's a N K H. It's okay. really great. Okay. Um, and I've also used breath work in conjunction with my PC, like doing like kind of like kiggles. Right. Um, and kind of charging that energy and, and cycling it through my chakras. There's an episode on this podcast. I forgot what number it is, but I do guide the listener through, through that as well, which is really yummy. That one I've had, like that one, I'll have energetic orgasms. The first time it happened, I did the practice and then I walked, I was, I lived by Griffith park at the time and I walked and I just saw this stream and I was like feeling really high from the breath work and from the the PC muscle work. And I saw this stream and I just felt so called to put my feet into the stream and as soon as I put my feet in the water, I immediately went into an orgasm. It was <laughs> I, and like I literally tapped out and I had my dog off the leash kind of running around. And so I, I was like, when I came back in, you know, to the presence or I guess reality, whatever you want to call it, I was just like, oh my God, where's my dog? <laughs> because oh my I literally God. lost touch. That was really powerful guys. Oh my God. That's amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was just a little bit of my story time. Thank you for your, your patience. With I loved it. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. So I'd love to get more into talking about somatics. What, like, what does somatics mean to you? I think that a lot of the listeners don't really even know what that word means. So I'd like to kind of cover the basics before we go deeper into that. Yeah. Somatic soma means of the body. So it's a type of healing modality where you're working with the body. And so, and I kind of touched on this before trauma, limiting beliefs, stories, um, old energy, old wounds, they live in the body. And so, you know, mindset work, you know, and manifestation work, that's all great. And I do a ton of it myself, but if you're not also incorporating the body, you're really missing kind of a, a important part of the healing journey. Mm-hmm. Because this, this, this stuff lives in our bodies. And so, uh, with somatic work, again, you're reaching those deeper layers of the conscious mind, excuse me, the unconscious mind and the unconscious, which is the body and healing beliefs at a nervous system level, healing beliefs that live in the tissue. And that is the power of somatic work. Yeah, absolutely. I I definitely resonate with that as well. I think that it can be very tempting to go into very meditative practices that are really keeping you in your like upper chakras, you know, cloudy, fun, you know, heavenly space, but we are having this gorgeous human experience and that includes our bodies. I, I also feel that, you know, some of the hesitance around like the human experience and bodies is just so much of the limiting stories or I guess polarity around bodies, like bodies do like some really gross things. And, you know, we're, we're taught that, you know, bodies should look and feel a certain way. And do you, have you, do you experience any any of that or have you come across any of that in your work? Um, I think the only thing that comes up for me in that is if I'm working with someone who has some uh, body dysmorphia Mm -hmm. and she has some, some self confidence, uh, about her body, the somatic work can be very, very helpful for that actually, because you're working with the belief system about her body that lives in the body. Yeah. You know? So that's the only thing that comes to mind as of in, in this moment. Um, 
But again, any belief system you have, any wound you're working with can be worked with. You know, and I just want to say too, it's important to be trauma informed. Um, I am still in, I have a lot of knowledge of somatics and I'm doing this program right now that is helping me be even more trauma informed. But I think when, if you're a, list, a listener and you're interested in work getting into somatics, make sure they are trauma informed in somatics, because that is very important. We don't want to, um, you don't want to re-traumatize yourself by being in the feeling. And if they don't know how to support you in grounding, um, it's not, it's not the best. Yeah, absolutely. Could you speak more into what it means to be trauma informed again, just for the listener to, to really get clear on, on what these terms are referring to? Well, you, you need to have, um, a knowledge base of how trauma works, what it is and how to support the client in, um, feeling it safely so that they are in a really safe container. They feel safe in their bodies to do so. Mm-hmm. And it's not a, it, it's a productive experience so that they're feeling through the emotions and there's a healing happening and they're not feeling the, they're not re-traumatizing themselves and just spinning in the experience and not having any grounding and safety to come out to. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely resonate with that. I've definitely worked with people that I felt like the, while the experience released something for me in the healing modalities, there was this element of, I don't really know what that was. And in some ways I'm, I'm more confused, you know, after. So I, I totally resonate with that. And thank you for, for speaking more into that. Um, what are some pieces or tips or practices that people could get started with in terms of somatic practice? Well, to to be fully honest, the breath channel is a really great resource. And the reason I say that is because they're short practices, they're easy practices, and yet they're very, very deep. Um, They're anywhere from five to 15 minutes. And it is a beautiful, and it's not even that it's entry level or that it's a beginner level. There are some uh, advanced practices in there, but anyone can do it. And, um, I think that if you're just starting on your breathwork and somatic journey, it's a really great place to start because they're, it's like bite size. You know, you can choose a video that resonates, pick a theme that you need of that day, do the practice, come again the next day, and it can be really easily integrated into your routine. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And I, and I love that this is, there's just this ocean, right? There's this ocean of, of opportunities and possibilities. And it, it sounds like there's so much for, for any different type of person and any specific thing that they're working through. Um, are there any other pieces that you want to touch in about kind of that? Like, what are some of the, the opportunities for transformation in this space? Mm, can you phrase a question in a different way? Yeah. So you kind of mentioned, you know, we're using breath work, using somatics to move through, you know, something like body dysmorphia or processing, you know, sexual assault. What are some other things that, you know, you've seen sort of as success stories or, or even for yourself? Mm, I see. Um, so much, I mean, so much, it really is such a dynamic and versatile modality. Um, I mean, a lot of my clients have worked through a lot of uh, disempowering beliefs around money, um, around love and relationship. I mean, I think in general, safety, knowing that they're safe to feel their emotions so that when they're not in breath work and they're in their day-to-day lives and they have a feeling or emotion come up, that it doesn't have to be buried, that they can, they do have the inner resources and the tools to feel it through. Uh, and breath work, you know, it's it's almost like a... Um, confirmation that my body knows what to do and my body knows how to heal. My body knows how to alchemize these feelings and and emotions. And, uh, what else? I mean, one of my, one of my old clients really did some work around power and, um, really understanding what power is. Um, she had some, uh, some disempowering beliefs about how power works and who gets to have the power. And there was a lot of integration that happened around her power and feeling her power on the inside. And, um, and I think in general, like breathwork is so good at integrating, Mm -hmm. like it's kind of takes you apart and, and puts you back together. And the integration of uh, the, the, the integration that happens in breathwork is 
really powerful because you're welcoming back exiled parts of yourself. You're welcoming back parts of yourself that you've deemed as unlovable and welcoming them back into your body and into your heart. And then there you are more of you. Absolutely. I love this idea of stepping into wholeness and also just being, letting go of any of the judgment or expectations that we have for ourselves and for the world. And uh, I think that we often, we're, we're living a human experience. We're going to be challenged. There's going to be, you know, opportunities and obstacles, you know, on a day to day and having something like a practice that puts you in a state of resiliency kind of, or, or having something to fall back into when you are feeling triggered is so beautiful. And to me, breath is, is one of the biggest pieces when it comes, comes to that, to coming back into the present, to letting go of your reactive patterns. Um, what would you mind sharing maybe like one sort of practice or, you know, way to kind of drop in using the breath, you know, for people to take home after this episode? Sure. Absolutely. Uh, so a really easy thing that you can do, don't do this while you're driving or, you know, in the car, but, um, one really easy thing you, you can do to just kind of clear some stagnant energy. Maybe you're in the middle of your day, you're feeling a little tired. Uh, maybe you just had a, a long zoom meeting or whatever it is. And if you just want to clear some energy, you can do a uh, breath of fire. So breathing in and out through the mouth and it's pumping at the navel. So it sounds like this. <laughs> excuse me, breathing in and out through the nose. And you can do 50 of those, or you can time it and do it for maybe a minute or two. And then 50 breaths through the mouth, also pumping at the navel. 50 of those. And then take three deep breaths in, you go in through the nose, out through the mouth three times, and then release on a big exhale. Sorry about that. Release on a big exhale and uh, close your practice. And um, it's it's really incredible. You'll notice how much clears and how more awake you'll feel. Beautiful. I love that. So for the listeners, that's breath of fire. You can Google that as well if you're um, you know, wanting to come back to that outside of this episode, or maybe you're listening, uh, on, you know, not a video platform. So Apple podcasts or Spotify, you can Google that and figure out kind of the way to do that as well, or find it on the breath channel. I'm sure. Right. Yeah, totally. Totally. (laughs) Absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I have a couple of just questions to close out with, but before I do so, is there anything else that you'd like to add or contribute or touch on before we kind of wrap up with these last couple of questions? No, I think that's it. I think I, um, just feeling, I feel complete. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. I think that there's been lots of value here and there's definitely more again on the breath channel. Um, so last questions, what awakens your arrows? What turns you on? What makes you feel erotically alive? Mm, Embodiment work. Um, I do a pleasure practice that makes me feel really alive, really erotic. I love sex. Um, it's very important to me and it's very, very nourishing for me and singing. I'm a, so on the side, we didn't, we didn't talk about this part, but on the side outside of, um, coaching and, and facilitation, I'm a professional singer and, uh, I'm in a band and I do gigs and all sorts of things. And singing has been, it is my more than the healing arts. Singing is my one true love. Uh, and it makes me feel so alive, so turned on, so connected to myself. That's so rad. What band? What kind of music? Can we hear a little bit more about that? Yeah. I, um, I work for a company called West coast music and they have a bunch of bands within the company. We have, we're in a cover band and we do a bunch of celebrity weddings and events. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah. It's really fun. I love to sing too, but I definitely, my voice has to be in a good place. And it's not always something curious because this obviously has a lot to do with breath. What sort of tips do you have for taking care of, you know, this part of your body, your throat? Mm. Well, I did. So, so practically I did uh, voice lessons for almost 15 years. Um, and so I really got my technique. I really nailed down the technique that, of, of my gift. I had a, a natural gift, but then I, I really worked with the technique of it. Um, rest water. There is a a honey. There is, um, a spray called, uh, singer secret or throat coat. And, um, they're incredible at lubricating the vocal cords. Um, 
not screaming, <laughs> just taking really good care of your actual instrument, the vocal cords themselves, so that they can be in, in, and also singing. I mean, just even strengthening your voice and rep and repeating your voice. It's um, the stronger, the more you sing, the stronger your voice will get. Beautiful. Great. Thank you for sharing all of that. So last piece, piece, where can listeners find you or support you? Obviously the breath channel, what's the website on that and, and all the other bits? Yeah. Come, come hang out with me on Instagram, uh, at Stevie L right underscore all my links and everything are there. Um, I love connecting with my community. If you DM me, I will DM you back. Um, and it's, uh, my website is stevierite.co and you can find the breath channel on there as well. Beautiful. And I will be, you know, linking all of that below as well for the listener. Um, so thank you again, Stevie, for joining me today. And I also want to express my gratitude to the listener. Thank you once more for opening yourself up to the idea of sacred sexuality with so much gratitude and love. Have a sexy and spiritual day. And I'll catch you next week on Talk Tantra to Me.